it's looking like, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's forming an engine now. Yeah, so we pretty much, we've got to the end of the trim line. Um, all the internals are in, most of the externals are on. We've pretty much now got an engine that'll run. So, so what we do here, we've got end of line pressure test. So before we put it into a to hot test, uh, we hook it up to these test rigs. Uh, we put low pressure air into the fuel, oil and water system and just make sure we haven't got any leaks in the system. Uh, make sure everything's tight, everything's fitted. Uh, there's no plugs, no pipes, yeah. nothing like that emitted. Um, and this, you know, it, not only does it guarantee uh, the engine's going to be okay when it gets to hot test, uh, it just makes sure it's one more line of defence for our customers that we've tightened everything up that we should have done. Um, obviously, obviously, you can see the amount of pipes and components and fittings and stuff like that. Um, you know, this is our one of our opportunities to make sure we, we haven't uh, built it incorrectly. Well, that's it. And you say you, you pressure test this with air. Yes. So any cavity, yeah. any pipe work or anything, it's all pressurised yeah. with air. So how do you monitor for if there is any leaks, how do you spot them? Yeah, so the equipment behind us, um, basically that'll tell us uh, which system's starting to leak. Uh, and, the, and sometimes, you know, if, the, if, if we've left, a, left one of these blanking pipes off, it's pretty obvious, you can hear the air rushing yeah. out. Um, for the smaller leaks, uh, we use a, a soapy water spray and we look for bubbles. Um, All right. <laughs> simple as that. Simple as that. Simple as that. Um, you know, we, the, if we do get any, any major leaks, uh, what we can do is we've got an offline rig, we can just send the engine straight to it uh, and we can do a bit more investigation work. So, you know, if there's any kind of porosity in any of the components, yeah. sometimes that'll show up at this point here. Obviously, it's a lot harder to find things like that. And they always record the defect in the system. So if they've had to tighten something, if they've found something loose, uh, and the guys have got all the right tooling to do that, so they, they can talk it off to the right level. Um, but they record all of that in the system, so we've got full traceability, and we can then take that back to point of fit and, and make sure the process is better. happen again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. On to what's this hot test? Hot, this it? is hot test. Hot yeah, test, so, right. So what's involved? So basically, after every engine's passed its pressure test, uh, we do a performance test. Um, so you know, is that with every engine? Every engine, every single engine, two minute full power. So you could test. be doing this like 250 times a day. Yeah, 300, 300 times a day. 300 times a day. You could be doing this yeah. with every single engine. Every single engine. So, um, and a lot of that's down to the variation that we've got in the process. Um, we, you know. Every engine could be different, yeah. so statistically it makes it hard to do like a, just a normal cold test. Yeah, it's not like you're doing batches, is We're it, not where doing, you could yeah, test one exactly. in every 20? Exactly, so we, we performance test every single engine, they, they run up to full power, um, we test for, you know, make sure that the oil pressures are correct, make sure that there isn't too much smoke coming off the engine, uh, you know, make sure that the blow by is okay, make sure fuel pressures, and more importantly, you know, power and torque are, are, are what they should be. Yeah. Um, so that, that's on every single engine. So as you can see on the test pallets behind you, the engine gets rigged up. Um, it's say, it's, uh... and, and obviously with every engine being different, these have to be very adaptable. So there's a lot of flexible pipes and flex flexible connections. You can see the exhaust connection there in the background. It's like a telescopic exhaust. Um, and then we've got, um, you know, charge air in, uh, charge air cooler there on the side of the pallet. Uh, we feed uh, cooling. Uh, anti-freezing uh, and, and obviously fuel. I see you literally got yeah, to replicate got, all yeah, those ancillary yeah, systems yeah. on the engine, haven't you? Yeah, we've got the uh, 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 dummy engine harness gets fitted, um, and that, that helps the, uh, obviously with the communications across the pallet to the right. test cell. But this this area was all new in in 2018, uh, so it was a, a project that ran for about two and a bit years. Uh, replaced our old test system, uh, and we've got we've now got four containerized test cells. Uh, which are you know really are state of the art. So yeah. uh, these are they're running the latest versions of software. Uh, they've got regen dynos in. Uh, so every time an engine runs under load, it's generating electricity for the, to power the rest of the oh, production. Actually, line. Literally yeah. powering so your we power plant. our own plant with our yeah. engines at times. Yeah. So uh, and, and it's you know considerable savings on our electricity bills through doing that. So right. So how much sort of savings were you getting uh, doing? So so when we when we went live with this, we we immediately dropped the energy usage by about 15 percent. Joking. Just just overnight. Just by creating. Just, overnight, just by yeah. harvesting a bit of energy. By harvest and and that equates to thousands and thousands of pounds a month, as you can imagine, in a, in yeah. a place like this. So. Uh, yeah, so we get a little bit back for it now. So that's not so bad, uh, is it? Yeah, so kick back. This it bit's is. just paid for itself. Effectively, yeah, yeah. Well, this was about 15 million dollars all told. So all right, it's, so it's, got, a bit, it's got a bit to it'll go. It'll take yeah. a little yeah. bit, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a really good system, uh, it. and it just helps us guarantee the the quality of the products that we're sending to our customers. Yeah. So you say you run them? What is it? Two minutes? Well, it's a six-minute cycle time, yeah. so it, it'll be in the test cell six minutes, but un under full load for about two minutes. Right. And what data can you get off that? We, we can get pretty much everything. So right. all the temperatures, pressures, any on-engine sensor we can monitor, 
Yeah, uh, and then we've got some other sensors on the pallet where we're monitoring air flows, temperatures, things like that of the, the cooling water, the air. Yeah. Um, one of the big ones is oil pressure. Um, so before we actually start the engine up, we, we do what's called a cold cranking cycle. Uh, we just turn the engine over and we just monitor the oil pressure because what we don't want to do is fire the engine up if, we haven't got, if we're not going to have any oil pressure because yeah. we'll pretty quickly destroy <laughs> it. Um, and we pick up on things like if there's any fuel leaks. So obviously the fuel system's fully pressurised here. Um, the system's really advanced, so what we do as part of the test cycle is uh, we prime the fuel system, get it up to full pressure, we then shut it off and then we monitor any pressure decay in the fuel system so we know if there's any like tiny tiny leaks that we wouldn't pick through the uh, through the air right. check. So yeah, it's quite an advanced system. Yeah. Uh, it's Sounds like good. it. Well we could hang around this bit for hours, but we've got to crack <laughs> on, we've got to see what else is involved. Yeah, cool, so let's, let's be doing. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, where do we find ourselves at now? Yeah, so after we come off uh, hot test, we go through what's known as the pre print process, uh, which is a bit of upfit. There's a few pipes and not, not an awful lot to see in there. But what we do at the end of that is we wash the engine. So the big the big box you can see behind you is actually an engine wash. Yeah. So, so this here, that, this it, massive yeah, box here. Right. It washes the engine with a phosphate-based chemical. Um, and what it does is it gets any greases, any oils, any contaminants off the engine yeah. ready for painting. Is that just an external wash? Yeah, it's yeah, just an yeah, external not, wash. Yeah. So we cover all the uh, all the holes of the engine basically before it goes in there, which is our first masking stage. Right. Uh, the engine gets dried in there as well, so it comes out the end of here, it comes out dry. Uh, and then the operators up on here, they, they mask the rest of the engine off. So as you can see behind you, uh, we mask off things like the flywheel housing, we mask off a lot of the customer connection points, mounting points, wherever we're going to connect a hose, a fitting, yeah. a coupling like that. That all gets masked up here. Uh, and then we've got another vision system in the background as well. So that actually inspects the engine and makes sure all the masking's on and it's on in the right yeah, place. Yeah, all, all the holes are yeah, covered. all the holes are covered. <laughs> uh, and then we carry on on the journey on the uh, on the overhead conveyor uh, and we go into paint. Right. That's it. So how long will this sort of process, this masking process take? Is it? So, so basically every workstation we're looking at around about 140 second cycle time. Right. Uh, on every workstation? On every, every right. workstation, yeah. So. Um, so what we do, if we need to run a bit faster or we need to run a bit slow, we, we add, add and take away people from the process. Yeah. Uh, so we might have like one operator works two stations or yeah. two operators across three stations. Uh, but, but generally the work content in each so workstation... So that's 140 is seconds per seconds. workstation, yeah. no matter which one it is. So Pretty much. For example, that's 140 seconds yep. to get the head on, yep. 140 seconds yep. to get turbo on. Yep. And, and, you know, that's easier said than done because yeah. the variation again, some things are a lot more complex than others and you know you see some of the, the newer products have you know all sorts of different things hanging off them uh, EGRs you know uh, variable geometry turbos yeah. all kinds of different things uh, and some of the older ones have, have much less so we try we try to balance um, our, our build schedule as well so we don't have all of one type of engine uh, coming at us so you know you ah, effectively right, say got you. you know these ones are a bit easier to build these ones are a bit harder so you get mix like them a, together a low spec high spec low yeah, spec and, or and you, you know try and, and balance yeah, it and you try and smooth oh, right. it out yeah clever stuff so, yeah 